Sarah, hi, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. So your show, it feels like you were fated to be Asta. It's like, I, I read too that the character was built around you. What is it about this character that is so special to you? Oh, Asta is this raw, vulnerable, layered character who has been through a lot of grief and heartache and she feels a bit isolated and unsure of where she fits in. And I think that that is um, something that I feel uh, also very closely to in the last few years in my life. I've gone through very similar things, um, not necessarily all in the same storyline, but I do understand right off the bat where she's coming from. And so that was really special for me to be able to just kind of attack that character right away, knowing exactly how I felt that she was feeling. How does it feel that, you know, now people are getting a chance to see the first episode and the pilot is fantastic as well too. You know, <laughs> you dive right in and, and you're really building a world right from the beginning. Well, yeah. what's it like? Thank you. Um, I was here with my castmate and best friend, Meredith Gerritsen, who plays Kate on the show. And um, she and I and our partners, Danny and TJ, had our own little mini premiere pandemic pod party, uh, safely, of course. And we were already just so floored to be able to finally witness it on TV ourselves. It's been, uh, not that I was counting, but it's been two years, three months, and it was 27 days from the moment we started the pilot to the moment we finally got to premiere. Um, so it was incredibly exciting to kind of cross that finish line together, especially since her and I have known each other for a very long time and it's already so special that we're in a show together at all. And then to see it finally premiere was a big deal. And um, you know, I'm just so excited that everyone um, that uh, that I know and love, and people that I don't know out there that I'm that I'm sending love to, are finally able to witness the work that we've put so hard into this. You talked about that your friend is in the show; she's also involved, and you mentioned a lot of other connections as well too. It's almost again like it was faded. To, to, to happen, you know, you'd started, you'd found out about it and ended filming on the same day. There's just so much going on. So again, do you feel like it just, you were magically drawn to the show? Yeah, you know, I've talked about this with a few castmates. There is a um, an incredibly magical synergy that has happened where a lot of us, uh, it feels like, um, this is what I liken it to. I, I don't know if you ever watched Battlestar Galactica, um, but there's a moment where there are key characters that hear music and they get stop what they're doing and they kind of get drawn to the center and they find each other. And I feel like that is exactly what happened with our cast. Um, it started, of course, of course, with Chris Sheridan, who was um, our head showrunner. And um, every moment someone got cast, he would introduce us to each other and we would start to, you know, uh, see these like synergies in our lives. Um, you know, LV who plays Isabel in the show, she actually sang at a wedding that Chris attended way before he even saw her come into an audition room. And he didn't even remember till after she was booked. Um, Meredith and I, of course, have known each other for a very long time. She got cast, you know, being someone who lived in New York and it was completely separate from me being cast in LA. And um, even when she crossed the, um, the country uh, while she was auditioning, she had this crack in her window and in the script, her window of her car had a crack in it at one point. Like there was just all these little things that we kept going, oh my gosh, look at this. This is, this is truly like divine spirit energy. You know, this is truly like something bigger than us. And it's been pretty incredible to w witness it and to be a part of it. You're right, faded is a great word. <laughs> I was actually gonna mention, well, Battlestar Galactica, I know that's a show that is meaningful for you as well as the movie Labyrinth as well too. <laughs> and I was gonna mention the importance of music in this show that in the first episode, you have a bit of a, you rock out a little bit and drink to uh, starships. And then one of my favorite scenes in the show later on is when you're in the car with your father and you're listening to the Snotty Nose Res Kids song. 
and you seem to know it as well too. Oh yeah. Um, we have been so fortunate to have so many incredible uh, musicians in this show, uh, specifically Native musicians who are able to provide such an incredible soundtrack to what the, the life of Patience Colorado is. Um, I actually didn't know um, that the Snotty Nose Rags kids at first. Gary Farmer, who plays my adopted father, Dan, he introduced me to and Chris to them. And it was so fun that day on set to be able to not only like, listen to it together with my you know would-be father but then to like bond with him Gary and I bonding as well as Dan and Asta bonding over this awesome song we were listening to in the car and also that that Starship song it's really fun we Alice and I you know who plays Darcy we didn't actually we, we'd heard the song we knew of the song but it's not you know something that we like knew all the words to but we found that the more we did the takes, we started really like getting into it and grooving to it. And so by the end, when you see us like knowing all the words, it's it's really truthful. <laughs> we were really like rocking out. It was so, I just love how music has been such an incredible part of the show, as well as, you know, as always bringing people together um, and uniting them. My cousin in Myrtle Beach, Denver, she reached out to me and she said like, I love Starship. We were all dancing in the living room while you were dancing in the, in the bar. And I just thought that was so cool that we could have this like togetherness on something like that. I have to ask too about the landscape because it is incredible on the show. Yes. Vancouver subbing in for, for Colorado. Vancouver, you <laughs> You shot in Vancouver before when uh, you were in Once Upon a Time. Uh, what, to be able to find the, the different landscapes, the ice caps, everything, what's it like? And um, I believe the bar that you shoot at is a soundstage as well in Vancouver, not a working bar. What's it like to film in that environment? Well, there's a really um, awesome town called Ladysmith. It's a it's a part of Vancouver Island in Vancouver. And when you go there, it is so incredibly warm and charming. And all of those shops that you see, and even the bar where the 59 is, you know, the outer exterior, um, the inside of that, I think was in fact like a cafe. It has this cool rocker vibe. There were posters up everywhere, you know, so we really took the energy and the warmth of Ladysmith and really put that into Patients Colorado. Um, I joke with some of my friends who live in Colorado, like, oh, you, you, you don't know Patients? It's right down the street. Like, you've never been there before? Just go through the forest, through past the portal of magic, and you'll find it, <laughs> you know? Um, and so it's been pretty cool to familiarize myself with Vancouver. You're right. I did spend a little bit of time there for once upon a time, but it was not nearly as extensive and it was such short visits that I didn't really get to explore. So this time around, I really got to witness, uh, especially in winter time, the seasons, um, snow, 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 which we don't get in LA. So that was pretty incredible. Um, and even talking to local, um, you know, Canadians about the the weather, the seasonal changes, the the atmosphere and the vibe. It really did provide such a safe haven for us to create Patients Colorado. And you know, I've I've been asked by a few people like, are those mountains really there? And you know, that's the work of our incredible CGI editors and people in post who are making it just look so picture perfect in the town that we're in. It, it, I think it provides the just like last little ounce of magic that we have when you see us on screen together. Mm. One of the uh, characters on your show self-identifies as Canadian or introduces herself as Canadian. Yeah. You wear <laughs> the Canadianness a little bit hard on the sleeve as well, too. Yeah. So when I'm watching the show, um, it took me way too long to figure it out, but then I had my aha moment that the title and the theme resident alien doesn't just apply to the one character that, you know, thematically, yeah, I know it, it took me quite a long time to figure yeah. that out. <laughs> it's a process to figure out the layered, the layered cake, if you will. <laughs> 
to what degree do you consider uh, Asta or yourself to be sort of like the resident alien of the show as well too? Yeah, I feel like this show is an incredibly strong ensemble of characters who are all trying to figure out who they are and how they fit in in this world. And so when when Alan, you know, uh, Harry comes along, played by Alan Tudyk, he's actually learning the complications of what it is to be human and and how far you know how deep and emotional and raw it is to it's not just the outer surface of what you look like it's how you feel about things and he's starting to you know he goes from brushing his teeth and figuring out how to function his body to like starting to feel how real pain and feelings and i feel like you know for asta she's somebody who also you know she's adopted and while she's you know raised in the native community she doesn't necessarily feel that she um belongs and i think when she meets harry she has this incredible um like like you were saying like this layered processing discovery that she has like i don't know if i trust this guy but he's so truthful and honest and so forward i, I don't know and, and you know, Darcy, my best friend seems to like him. Maybe he's not so bad. And then there's this familiarity she feels with somebody who really is, you know, in all intents and purposes, the odd man out, you know, the fish out of water. And, and yet everybody, while we all make these reactions and look at him in a certain way, like you're a weirdo, like we, we're, we're all dealing with our own stuff. We're so blinded by our own things that we're kind of like, okay, whatever, weird guy. And we just, I mean, it's no wonder he can get away with being so bizarro and us not even questioning it. I mean, let's think about this. If you met somebody like Harry, would you really assume that he was an alien? You know, you would, would you actually go to that length in your mind? Probably not. You would just be like, okay, he's a little off. I'm not sure about that guy, but you know what? I've got my own shit I'm dealing with. So I'm not worried about him. And I feel like that is the thing that every character in the show gets to do. And the thing that I'm really excited for people to get to discover is um, the unfolding of these characters. Um, you get to see someone like Elizabeth Bowen who plays Deputy Liv. You know, she starts out really small and meek and she's she's trying to assert herself as a deputy, but she's kind of overshadowed by Sheriff Mike. And, and as each episode goes on, you start to see her really unfold into this like, this finding herself and this strength that, that you didn't know or she didn't even know existed. And I think, you know, Elizabeth is an incredible actress. And I also think she and her character are a perfect example of everybody's kind of like, you know, ladder to discovering themselves and like what really matters to them, um, including Asta. I think Asta really does feel like an outsider and um, doesn't know, you know, she comes back home, she's living with her dad again, she feels like a failure, and she feels um, just a little out of sorts. And so you're right, you know, we're all residents, we're all aliens, and we're all, and yet we're all humans, except for Harry, you know, <laughs> so yeah. I think that there is an incredible synergy in the name as well. Yeah. So the sort of obvious, um, with, with Alan, you can see that, you know, he bends his face in certain ways, he acts with a sort of physicality. But again, throughout watching it, I noticed that you do that too. When you're talking about the layeredness and building your character, I mean, you get you get to, to, to kick in the first episode, but oh. you're really sort of, um, throughout the episodes that I've seen, you're really unpacking, it seems, the character. Playing her maybe a little bit differently uh, throughout, what do you, what do you tap into? Wow, first of all, Charles, I am just impressed with how much you are seeing and recognizing these like wonderful little intricacies that we get to have as actors um, playing a part in a show because, um, you know, especially I feel we're so fortunate to be um, with a cast and a writer such as Chris Sheridan who, who really tells such a beautiful story that unfolds all its, all its own that there's really not much we have to put on it. We just really kind of need to sit back and let it happen to us. Um, and I feel like I, I came into this 
process as Sarah, you know, as an actor, the same way that Asta comes into this first episode, raw, vulnerable, a little afraid, confused, in grief. Um, and then as Asta begins to understand her place, her purpose, what really matters to her, I also was beginning to learn my place and my purpose um, in, a, in a role of this caliber in this show, um, how to be um, in communication on set with your superiors, how to have incredible open dialogue about you know, what happens with Asta and, and well, I don't know if she would say that, maybe she would say this. And, you know, Chris Sheridan's so good at asking every single one of us how we feel. And if we really think that's something our character would do and not every showrunner that I've worked with in the past has given me that opportunity. So I just think it's been incredibly synergetic, you know, kind of to bring it back to what we talked about at the beginning, that my personal storyline as Sarah in my lifetime has been one of true growth and transformation and evolution. And that's been very like uh, simpatico with a Asta as well. And that journey, what has that meant to you? Because, you know, you were getting, you won a, an award for experimental theater and um wow you, <laughs> good pulling it out from the from from the depths good for you i'm trying yeah um you want to you are wanting to do a horror movie coming up too um you know i, I don't want to call back too much to some of your past roles but i mean you know the the leftovers that was an incredible incredible scene and sequence mm -hmm. um also fraught with so much meaning what has your journey to this point meant? What are the things that you are enjoying doing and want to be doing? Thank you um, for, for seeing me, Charles, and seeing where I've come from. It's been 14 years in the business, personally. I moved here in 2007. Um, I didn't know anyone. I didn't know, uh, you know, I had like two friends, but I, I didn't know anyone in the business. And I really, I, I um, really worked my way up from scratch. I learned a lot early on about the do's and don'ts. And I tried this, I tried that. Everybody's got a theory on what's best in the business. Um, I was really fortunate to meet my manager, Zach James, who was a part of Bohemia Group, kind of, uh, you know, about halfway through my career, which really then took me to a different level of understanding what I was capable of. Um, it's really amazing when you have just one person in the industry show their belief in you, you know, when you already have that belief in yourself. And so there was a whole new confidence that came with working with him. And um, that's when I started, um, it wasn't long after that I, st I booked Leftovers, which was my first television, uh, you know, show. And it, I, I was so incredibly grateful because at that time, you know, similar to what we're talking about with the synergy of Asta, I had just gone through an incredibly uh, hard breakup and was feeling very lost and very like, I've got nothing left to lose. So when I went into that audition for Leftovers that day, I, I just left it all on the table. And I think part of the reason that I booked it is because there was no room for fear and there was no room for worrying about whether or not I was doing it right. It was just me going in there completely raw and open and uh, how incredible to be able to play a, a cave woman who is already so raw and grounded and rooted in the earth and open, you know? So I, I think that when I booked that, that of course, anytime you book something, uh, it's a win. Even if you don't book something, it's a win just getting into the casting room and making a good impression. But after that booking, things really started to change with how I was directing my focus and the kinds of roles I wanted to play. And it really was a beautiful ladder of success to where I'm at now, being able to then portray a character who starts in grief and has nothing left to lose. And that is really how my television career began. You know, even though I've been doing this for 14 years, it, it's, I was doing a lot more independent film and trying to figure out my way into the film world and TV wasn't even on my radar until after meeting with Zach and kind of putting that in my focus. So 
it's been incredibly rewarding. And on top of it, the first independent film I ever did, uh, there was like three of them uh, in, in a matter of two years. Um, they all came out on sci-fi. So it was this beautiful, like full circle back to, oh, here we are. Here's this wonderful network that gave me a home in the first place. And now I really get to like figure out who I am in this new home with them. And I just, that to me is the biggest synergy of them all. <laughs> mm. Sci-fi, a very, very interesting home for your show. I'm glad that you say it all comes together and hearing you describe it, you know, it, it is sci-fi, sci-fi elements, but, you know, comedic, dramatic, yeah. so much going on with it. Yeah. Um, you know, and you've already talked about uh, Battlestar Galactica and Labyrinth, but I'm curious as to what shows, and this show, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it, one of a kind, what kind of shows have meant something like that to you? What do you like as a viewer? What kind of shows do you gravitate towards? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I would say early on when I was in college, I was a huge fan of Felicity back in the day. I absolutely um, adored and admired and respected Carrie Russell in that role. Um, I had never seen anyone take on a role with such like open heart honesty. And I always have endeavored to be able to play characters like that. So to be able to now play a character like that has been so rewarding and special for me. And so many levels. Um, I'm when it comes to like what I like to watch, you know, I was a big Game of Thrones fan. I actually I wasn't even really a sci fi person until I saw Battlestar Galactica. And that's the power of a really good story. You know, it just doesn't matter where you are in the world or the galaxy. If it's a good story and good characters and and a good cast who knows how to handle that story, then it then it, it's a success you know, in my mind. Um, so I was really intrigued at how, how I was finally catching up to what a lot of sci-fi fans have told me, you know, is true about the sci-fi world. There is so much heart and depth to um, being able to play, uh, you know, other <laughs> like worldly, you know, outside of this world uh, characters. And I feel like, this show being that you, you know, as you said, comedy and drama mixed, this show is going to be a real big surprise, I think, for people who are sci-fi fans, as well as people who maybe were like me before Battlestar Galactica and weren't really into sci-fi. I think that people will be surprised how much they enjoy it if they weren't really a sci-fi viewer and how much they're intrigued by it, not being as sci-fi-y as what they normally watch if they're a sci-fi viewer. Um, I think that there's so much heart there. And I think, you know, besides the fact that when I watched Labyrinth when I was 11 and fell in love with David Bowie, I'm convinced he was an alien walking among us, living on this earth that we were so lucky to even just remotely hear from <laughs> in his music and in his work. Um, and I just find that I always gravitate towards true storytelling. I love a good documentary. I, I even love some good reality series because I like to just see human beings in their element, um, especially when they're messy, especially when they're making mistakes, because that is the most human thing there is. And so for me to be playing such a messy, vulnerable human being in front of uh, you know, what I don't know is an alien who is trying to be a messy, vulnerable human being because he's doing it <laughs> definitely not flawlessly. <laughs> um, it's been pretty awesome to uh, to portray that. And I think sci-fi is, um, is really, I think sci-fi as a network has been sort of an underdog in certain ways. And I think that this really is them showing up and saying, look, we have this material that really means something and we think that you're going to love it. And I think that there have been shows that they've done that with in the past, you know, Battlestar and the Magicians. Like, I, I just feel like this is a new level of a mix of comedy and drama that, that nobody really has ever experienced before mm. on sci-fi. And I'm excited that we get to be a part of that. Mm. Mess messy, but clean, right? As Amblin yeah. wants you to say. Yeah. There's so much 
going on on the show and and I'm in the strange position of having seen more episodes than you but at the same time you got to live them what was one of your favorite moments scenes on the show yes <sighs> one of my favorite moments oof there's so many i think one of my first I have to go back to the pilot really when he is, when Harry is, you know, uh, sniffing my, my good friend, Sam, who was like a father to me, his body parts. I mean, he, he's taking, you know, when I was on set with Alan that day, I can't tell you how many takes it took for me to not break because he was just doing something different every time. And it was my first big scene with Alan. Um, and I was already a fan of Alan's before we started working together um, because of Firefly. And I, you know, I really respected his ability to just show up and just be on and constantly have a new way of looking at the material. And so I had so much fun being able to witness what I feel is a comic genius in action, you know, just being able to sit back and be part of the audience's perspective of, you see what I'm saying? Cause this is incredibly awkward and incredible, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that was one of my favorite moments in the very beginning. Um, and then there was a moment that you don't actually get to see in um, season one. Uh, unfortunately, there just wasn't enough room for it. And so we're hopefully going to get to it in, in if and when we pick up a season two. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a, a moment where I got to do a scene with my best friend, Meredith, where her, Asta and Kate have a moment together, um, you know, talking about, uh, you know, things that she's dealing with, with Max and her, you know, her fears about what's going on with Max. Um, and I, even though you don't get to see that scene this season, it is just etched in my heart as such a memorable moment where my friend Meredith and I, who met so long ago, um, who always said one day we're going to be in the same show together. And then we finally made it happen to be able to actually like show up to set and do a scene together. It was, we, I mean, I couldn't help but cry when I first got there. <laughs> so those are some of my um, most memorable moments. And I think there's a lot of really good stuff on the show. Um, I, I absolutely love, uh, and this will be like just something I think that continues on, whenever I get to be with my girls, whenever I get to be with Alice, whenever I get to chat with Deputy Liv, um, you know, or, or even just the ensemble as a whole, like when you see maybe um, like a, the mayor and Sheriff Mike talk to the townspeople, it's so wonderful to be with the ensemble that is so strong and talented and awesome. It's just, it warms my heart to no end when we get a chance to all be together and make it happen, you know, on screen. I was gonna say, and lastly, your bowling team, for example, that's so much fun to see that. And I'm allowed to say too now, Linda Hamilton shows up. Hey. Do you think for perhaps for you might have a Sarah Connor type role for you in the future? Oh man, I don't know. Uh, that would be, that's a really cool question. I don't know, I, that would be awesome. Yes, please uh, sign me up. I, I, you know, unfortunately I didn't get to meet Linda Hamilton on set because our storylines are separate, um, but just knowing she was a part of the cast and just hearing other people get to work with her and how incredibly awesome she is. She tells the best stories and she just brings in the best hugs and energy. You know, it, it was so awesome to know that she got to be a part of it. And I, I mean, I remember uh, Beauty and the Beast back in the day. Like I remember, you know, uh, watching Linda Hamilton play Sarah Connor and, you know, be able to remember that in my youth and then have that same feeling knowing that she was going to be a part of the show. I really hope that um, Asta gets to have a scene with her in the future too. You know, I think that would be really, really exciting. I just want to say thank you. This was really great. It's such a pleasure hearing from you, speaking with you. Thank you, Charles. I love that green sweater. Obviously, we're going for the heart chakra today, but thank you so much for meeting with me. It was awesome to meet you.